Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring his truth to you. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we trust in you today. Wisdom, revelation coming from your spirit into our hearts. Renewing our minds as you show us to. I declare right now, burdens are being removed, yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now then, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen. <laughs> we, we, we are talking about tithing. And each time I open my mouth, the Holy Spirit still takes me, you know, because that's how he walks. Lots of foundations need to be set so you can carry what the truth is. You know, yesterday I shared with you, you know, how that Adeboye said, if you don't tie it, you will not make heaven. And I told you yesterday, it's the truth. If you don't tie it, I, I, I don't even know how you, you, you can walk with Jesus Christ without paying tight. Because he will demand, he will receive his tithe. That's one of his ministries as high priest. Not just one of his ministries, his main ministry. I told you last week, listen. <clears throat> Jesus became poor. And that was part of the things he did on earth. You see, his primary purpose, the reason there was ever a Jesus at all was not, ah, my show, brady, ah, I pray you understand this, was not because Adam and Eve sinned. No. If Adam and Eve had not sinned, Jesus would still have come. Why? Because it was written of him from the foundation of the world. Now, the foundation, when you read the foundation of the world, it is before Adam and Eve got into anything, if, before they were even created. It was written from the foundation of the world that Jesus will come. To do what? Yeah, now you're speaking. Now you're speaking. You see, when God created man, he had this plan that he was going to populate the earth. And he would put life on earth and then he would populate it with humans, you see. And then he, he had his plans concerning that. So he was going to create these humans that are going to be in his image and after his likeness. Now, whatever plans he has after that, he knows. So we have not even scratched one part of God's plan. You know, you know I was thinking one day, I'm like, you know, there are, the earth is just one planet in the solar system. Just one planet. There are several planets. Now scientists are coming to tell us that there are more than what we used to think it was. Because they are discovering more. As they look further, they are discovering more. What is inside those planets? What is God's plan for all those planets? Do you know? Do you know? We know in part, brothers and sisters, so before you open your mouth, calm down. <laughs> say what the Holy Spirit has given you to say. At least that one, you will never be wrong. Don't speak like you know too much. Just say what the Holy Spirit has given you or has taught you to say. And you'll be fine. And so I was just thinking, I'm like, wait, hold on. We are being raised to become exactly like God. Okay. Now, if you, if you understand history in creation and, and, and scriptures, <clears throat> you will know that there was a time Lucifer was the one in charge of the earth. Now, you know that before Adam and Eve were created. So, Lucifer was in charge of the earth. Now, there were activities on, on the earth. There were cities. There was a life on this earth before Adam and Eve were created. And the Bible says that. Praise God. Go do your study. I'm not teaching on that right now. But the Bible says that. 
Lucifer rebelled against God and everything was destroyed. So then God comes up and he began to create everything again. And he made man. And then his plan is man is going to be in his image and after his likeness. And then I, I was thinking of it. I'm like, okay, so what's going to happen afterwards? When we become in his image and in his likeness. Now, what does that mean? We reason like him. We talk like him. We act like him. See? Now, you know Adam and Eve, they were not already in his image and in his likeness. They weren't. They weren't. Of course they were. If you think they were, then you, you don't understand things. They weren't. But that's what God said. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Okay. Genesis chapter 1 said that. And if you know the Bible very well, you know Genesis chapter 1 was God just speaking his plans. He wasn't doing any work. He was the whole of Genesis chapter 1. God was speaking his plans. The actual work started from Genesis chapter 2 and at verse 4. That's where the actual work of creation started. So when they say, God, it took God seven days to create this whole world. No, it took God seven days to speak forth his plan for the whole creation. See? But then, it didn't take seven days for everything you see now to be. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? No, it didn't take seven days. It took years and years. That's why Genesis chapter 2 says, from verse 4 says, These are the generations of the heavens and the earth in the day that they were created, in the day that the Lord God made them. So there are things God have ordained already that we've still not seen on the earth. Oh yeah. But he spoke about them in Genesis chapter 1. So now it was written that Jesus will, be, will come into this world. It was written that Jesus will be born into this world. And his assignment was simple. To give us life. See? That was his assignment. Now, I believe. You remember the tree that God kept in the garden and said they shouldn't eat. Someone was to come and minister that tree to them. That fruit to them. Now, not just the physical fruit. The physical fruit was just a symbol that you have reached a point where I can now allow you to eat this. See? At that point, then Jesus, because the tree of life was there. Now, according to the testimony of the Spirit, said this tree of life, when they eat it, they will no more die. They will now become like us. Did you see that? And that's to tell you that they were not like him. Until they ate those trees, those, those, the fruits from those trees in the garden. They were not to be like him. Yet. So, but you know the story. Adam and Eve sinned and everything went wrong and went wrong. But Jesus still came. Now what just happened with Adam and the sin of Adam and Eve was this. They added more work for Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? So now you came to give these people life. But hey, this is how bad they have fellowship with death. So for you to give them the life now, which is his ministry, he first of all have to deal with the spirit of death that have held them bound. Mm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So he came to give man life. But this man he came to give life has a problem. What's the problem? The problem is he's entangled with many issues. Because of these issues, he will not have the right to receive life that you came to give. So what do we do? Dismantle those issues. Said, All right, so what do we do? Now, this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. He said, well, he has sinned, so you need to pay for their sins. Okay, how do I pay for their sins? your blood if you will give them your blood as payment for their sins then they will be redeemed forever because man sinned willingly you understand so if you will give their blood okay I'm ready alright then you will need to die 
except a corn of wheat falls to the ground. That if you want to raise your kind, then you will need to die. If I die, how will you give them life? How will I give them life? Leave that to me. I am the Lord God. <laughs> he said, oh, blessed be God. Bless. You, you need to fellowship with him. I don't know what you do with your life. I share these things freely with you now. You know, as though I sat down and someone was teaching me. Yes, someone was teaching me. Who's the person? He's the Lord. I said, okay. He said, my ministry is to give them life. And now he's saying, I should die. If I die, how will I give them life? His word cannot be broken concerning me. I have pleased him. I'm not dying because I've done anything wrong. He will not crucify me for doing nothing wrong. But he wants to put their sin on me. So how will I give them life? I know him. He can raise the dead. Jesus taught like Abraham did. When God told him to offer up Isaac. So Jesus boldly said, this thing have I received from my father. He gave me the power to lay down my life. He gave me the power to take it up again. I received that from my father. So Jesus said, Lord, I'm willing. And that, that is faith. And that is where it pleases God. He's going to die. Yet he believes he's going to give us life. God said, go ahead. And so when Jesus went to the cross, you know the story. All our sins were laid on him. He receives those stripes. And the Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. Now the details of every, there was nothing that happened to Jesus on that way to the cross that was a mistake. No. The lashes he received, they were counted. See, each was for a specific reason. Even the person that spat on him, it was a specific reason. Nobody would just think, let me spit on him. You know, you because see somebody spit on him, you go and spit on him. An angel would have knocked your head. Everything he did was specifically done to him for a reason. And then he went on that cross and he says, it is finished. The more he did that, I'm telling you this for a reason. The moment he did that, Satan knew he did not kill him. The spirit of death knew that it did not get this one. What's going on here? Is there any death apart from me? <laughs> See, because anybody that dies is the spirit of death that casts its shadow upon them and take them as prisoners. But this one is giving up the ghost. So, how did he give up the ghost? I, I couldn't cast my shadow on him. So, how did he do it? So, Jesus was a mystery to death, even in death. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. And then, he rose from the dead. Now that's why scriptures tells us he went and he dealt with all those principalities. He made a public show of them. Because they could, now don't think they were fighting, you know, I, I blow you, you fall down, you get up, you try to kick me, nonsense. That's not what happened, praise God. It was a war of laws and principles. Words were being spoken. Because he did that, he was now qualified. You see, because he had overpowered death. Ah, he was now qualified to give man life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? So when Jesus say, Allah Kasa, you remember what Jesus said in the book of John? He said, listen, he said, the Father has given me authority to give life to whomsoever I will. That's in John chapter 17. He said, Father, the hour has come from verse 1. 
Glorify your son as you have given him authority over all flesh. Ah. <laughs> My time is up. <sighs> I've got to stop here now, praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.